Hello, welcome to Bill at Blackjacks. If you just saw an advert before you got here, I'd like you to know that's not my advert, that's YouTube's advert because this channel hasn't been monetized yet. And it hasn't been monetized yet because you're not watching enough of my videos. I need to get a few hundred more watch hours. So if you could get a friend to watch my videos, you can watch more of my videos. Just watch some bloody videos. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Alternatively, you could send me a tenner you've been sent into the donkey sanctuary. Your choice. Anyway, today, um, having made that CX500 fork brace thing, which I may or may not have put a video up for yet, who knows, um, that was designed for the, fork, the brake hose to go through, I thought I'd make the brake hoses because you might be interested in seeing how I make brake hoses. This is not a how to make brake hoses, this is how I make brake hoses. I will point out that making brake hoses comes with consequences if you get it wrong, those consequences include but are not limited to injury, paralysis, death, road rash, and looking stupid in front of your mates. And not necessarily, or that isn't necessarily gonna to happen to you. So it could happen to somebody else. So this is how I do it. It's not, I'm not telling you how to do it. Okay, are we clear? And with that said, let's get on with the video. What I like to do is to put all the banjos in place to work out the run of the tube. When you're doing the banjos, those copper washers really want replacing. You can replace the banjo bolt, but check the thread because some of them are M10 by one and some of them are M10 by 1.25. And you want to get the right one because otherwise you'll be messing the thread up in the caliper. So the first thing is they're all 15 degree banjos I've got here. So, oh, there we go. Right. Um, I don't know if you can see that's 15 degree banjo, it's pointing in completely wrong direction, so not that effort put now on there was completely wasted. Oh, several thumbs there. Okay. Um, I've got some short bits of tube over it. Well, it's not tubes, hose. Which is the shortest bit? That's the shortest bit. That's too short. This is too short. Yes, too short. Okay, I won't use that one then. Uh, that looks like it might be long enough. Yep, yeah, so we're using that one. Well, at least we're having a look at losing that one. Uh, so, the theory here is that that is going up through there like that. Because if I just looped it over the top, then it's going to snag in the tire and it's all going to get unpleasant. And looking at that, the angle of departure from the banjo looks good. Um, what have got there? Oh, yeah, same around the other side. Look, look, look. Cool. So we can, uh, we can connect that one up. So let's have a look at how you do that then, shall we? Yeah, fluffy. Okay, the braided hose. Um, you can cut it with side cutters, or you can tape it and use a junior hacksaw. I used to tape it, use a junior hacksaw, but that usually puts burrs on it and takes a long time to clean up. But using a pair of side cutters, the really important thing, it, well, it's two important things, is make sure it's square. You don't cut it on an angle like that or like that. You want it square because when the olive goes on the end, it has to sit <coughs> flush on the inner pipe. The Teflon one. Who's? I don't know. Right, so if I get right up close to the jaws, I've got more leverage on that. So hold it square, squeeze, 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 squeeze. And, oh, pop it off. And there you have it. <laughs> Square cut, but we've crushed the inner for now. So take the scriber and stick that in there. Work that around a little bit. Excuse 
as you could. something like round. Check it for any burrs. And push the scriber down the side of the braid. Lean it out. Spreads it away from the Spreads away from the hose in the middle. I, know, I get confused with my hoses, my tubes, and my pipes today. Right. Really small screwdrivers are good for this as well, as you can get it in there. Work it down. There you go. So it's all sprayed out. Like a little flower. Right, at that point, we can go. Oh dear, I didn't put the nut on. But luckily, it's got the other end. So make sure you put the nut, make sure you put the nut on. And you can get uh, the olive. Popeye's girlfriend and work that down onto the Teflon inner. Hopefully you can see the uh, plastic tube is barred up against the end of the oval. It's an olive. Uh, so with that in the right place. We can uh, push the tail of the banjo in and then if you turn the nut, it'll screw itself over the sticky end of the braid. Now, get that started on the nut and take 10 mil bolt, iron bolt, whatever, with a plain shank. Because if you stick that through there, that shank isn't going to damage the, the banjo. Then you'll find that as you do this up, after a certain point, there you go, the hose wants to go with the nut. If you start it, from here, right on the end of the thread, just engaged. <clears throat> you can turn the whole, you can turn the nut with the banjo at this point. So if you've already got one on the other end and you want them to like parallel on the table to stop the hose from doing that on the bike, <clears throat> this is your chance to adjust it. Once you've adjusted it, it seems to me, or it has always seemed to me, that, Assuming I've dialed that rotation in right, if I just do it by do it up by turning the turning the banjo in the nut rather than trying to turn the nut, then everything goes groovy. This isn't done quite a bit. Now that was go. There's resistance there. Resistance is futile. I don't know if you can see it, but as a a thread or two sticking out. So I'm going to do that up until you can barely see that last thread. And that's here we go. So you barely see that last thread, and then that should be groovy. So spanner on the nut, hold the pipe still, turn the banjo. And when it's back in the rotation you want, there.
that would normally be done up. So there you have it. Um, I have a preference because all that malarkey with the rotation. I'll usually use one of these. I'll use one of these on one end. I'll use one of these on the other end. Now this is a speed flow. And you can see the nut. The nut turns. So I when I pop it in there, do the nut up. So now for this you just need two spanners, I don't have two spanners. Eventually that pinches up, but <clears throat> I can position, even as it's approaching tight, I can still move the banjo to get it in the position I want. So what I generally do is use <coughs> either both, those on both ends, <coughs> Or Goodridge went like that on one end. I'm trying to save some money because these are more expensive, and a speed flow one on the other end. So, without any further ado, let's get it installed on the motorcycle. Let's shove that out there, try and keep the right rotation. That. You can't really see what's going on there. I tried to do this before and take the olive off, put it somewhere safe. Let's see if we can persuade this to go over the masking tape. Yes, without any aggravation whatsoever. And then it's fairly clear what that needs cutting. So take the side cars and Cut it there, and there we go. So you probably need to get your shoulder into it and move it down near the jaws. Oh, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. Check if you cut it square, take your pointy screwdriver, work it up into the Teflon inner. That gets that sorted out. Take your mystical Victorian brass screwdriver of clock repair. <clears throat> this is also why we have a scriper. Sometimes it's going to be really difficult. And this looks like it might be one of them times. There we go. <clears throat> Sometimes it helps if you do that. This is obviously made slightly more difficult by the fact that there's a fork brace involved. Okay, now I'm looking down there and I can see that the Teflon tube has not made it to the end of the olive, so... Yeah, that's not how you get it. Now notice that the one I did on the bench was like really straightforward and the one I'm trying to do with it wound through the fork brace and all the other govins is being a complete noise. Uh, and that is in fact it. Thank God for that. 
Right. <coughs> now the problem we got now is that <coughs> this one <coughs> wants to keep that rotation in relation to the pipe. And what you'll see in a minute is that <coughs> as you start doing the pipe up, the pipe wants to start turning. Let me rephrase that. As you start doing the union up, it wants to take the pipe with it. Take the banjo bolt out. Hopefully it's still recording. It tells me I'm still recording. I suppose. I get the bugger started. There. Right. Now I can hold that still. And that is where I need to end up. So I can go, that's like one turn. That's two, there, can't come back to go, to lose that, no, oh, come on. about where it was. Now I've got about one thread sticking out and it's pointing in more or less the right direction so yep there you go. What you don't want to do is end up with the banjo at 90 degrees to that because then you end up with the sort of twists in the pipes. And if you ever see these installed on something and they look stupid because they're all sticking out in the wind, it's because they didn't get this rotation bit right. And there we have it. So now I've just got to do the same for the top. Where'd it go? Not that much to it, really. Uh, the olive needs to sit against the Teflon inner nicely so the inner, the hose needs to be cut square because if the teflon inner is cut at an angle it's going to meet the olive like that and it's not going to be there as you do the nut up the olive's getting crushed against the teflon liner and gripping the tail of the banjo so you can see that not having it right would be a bit of a pain um and really that is all there is to it. Um, I do quite a lot of them. Occasionally you get one that leaks, so you just take it off, put another turn on it, job done. Um, put it back on and if it still leaks, then take it apart and have a look because you've probably done something wrong. Uh, yeah, I think that's about it really. Um, so take care of yourselves and I will see you in the next one, whenever that is.